So I bet you've had power chains or know someone that has had power chains. Or maybe you're just doing your due diligence before getting your braces and are curious, do I need power chains? Well, in today's episode, we're going to briefly review what power chains are and five of the most common reasons why you might need power chains during your braces journey. Let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. If you guys haven't noticed, we finally got a new video set up. So if you guys are digging today's quality, go down there and smash that like button. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with more content like this. So a topic of conversation on the Braces Club, as well as on here, a lot of the time is people asking, do I need power chains through my braces journey? A lot of people either are afraid of them or want them because they think it looks good. So in today's episode, I wanna really briefly talk about what power chains are and then dive into the five most common reasons why you might need power chains during your braces journey. And at the very end of today's episode, we're gonna answer the question of, do power chains hurt? So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I'm curious, have you guys ever had power chains? Or maybe you have power chains right now. Let me know in the comments of today's video if you guys have power chains. And while you're down there, let me know what color power chains you guys are rocking. Because Halloween is around the corner and you guys better be rocking black and orange because Halloween, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Halloween is my birthday. So you guys better represent. If you guys are rocking power chains right now, go ahead and take a selfie on Instagram and tag me at Dr. Greg Ortho and telling me why and how much you love your braces. I'll pick some of you guys and repost it on my story. So like always, I'm gonna go ahead and put the timestamps in this corner so you could jump ahead wherever you want in today's video. But let's get started right in the beginning and kind of briefly talk about what a power chain even is. Now, I don't wanna talk about this too much because we talked about this in a previous video, actually one of the first videos on this channel, and we dove into a lot of detail in that video. So if you wanna learn more, go ahead and visit that one. I'm gonna put it in the description as well as in the corner of today's video. But very briefly, what a power chain is, is it's those color ties that are on your teeth, but instead of being individual on each tooth, they're linked together. So basically it's one strip of power chain that goes across either several teeth or one and two teeth. And what it does is it has shape memory. It's like an elastic, right? So if you stretch it out between two teeth or two buttons or tooth anything, what it's gonna do is it's gonna put a force between those two things to bring them closer together. And a lot of people might think, well, power chains are only used to close space. And while that's the main reason they're used, they have a bunch of different uses in orthodontics, which we'll talk about in just a second. You gotta be patient if you wanna learn more about power chains. And by the way, most of the things I talk about in today's episode are just generalities. Your case might be very specific and might need power chains or might not need power chains. So don't use this as like, I need power chains or I don't need power chains. That's, that's not true. This is just the most common reasons, okay? So the first reason why power chains are used in orthodontics is exactly to close space. Like I said, power chains are used to pull teeth together or bring things closer together. So let's say you have gaps in your case. Your orthodontist might put a power chain between these gaps to bring those teeth closer together. The way these power chains work is that they put a tension between two teeth. And as you put the tension between those teeth, the bone will remodel inside, bringing those teeth closer together. We've talked about how braces work, and this is basically utilizing that biology on how braces actually function. So by putting forces between two teeth, we're able to bring those teeth closer together. And you might be thinking, you know what? I just got my braces on and I have gaps between my teeth, but there's no power chain. And that's completely okay. Because a lot of the times your orthodontist doesn't use power chains early on in treatment because the first couple of wires that we use in orthodontics are really, really like flimsy. They have shape memory, but the thing is, is they're not that strong. So if you put a power chain between them, it might actually overpower the wire. So power chains aren't generally done, you know, right in the beginning. Sometimes they might be, but most of the times they're done a little bit later on in your treatment. So if you have gaps, but you don't have power chains, don't worry, it's, it's likely gonna come, but don't worry. Which brings me to the second most common case where power chains are used. And that's, again, if you wanna close space, but this is space caused by extractions. So let's say your orthodontist prescribes some extractions of let's say premolars, right? Now there's a gap in that area and we need to close that space. So what would we use to close that space? You guessed it. One of the things that we could do is use a power chain to pull those teeth backwards and close the space that's developed because of the extraction. Now there's a bunch of different reasons why your orthodontist might recommend extraction of teeth. But that's not the topic of today's video. We've, we've talked about that before, but I wanna let you know that when you have extractions, you probably will need a power chain. There are different ways to close space, which we have talked about. There are closing loops, there are coil springs, there are a bunch of different ways to close space. 
but the most common way to close space is by using a power chain. Just like with gaps, you might not get power chains right in the beginning of your treatment if you have these extractions because we have to work up to wires that are a little bit bigger or firmer so that we could slide those teeth on the wire. When we're trying to close space with braces, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that that bracket is kind of sliding on the wire, like basically a bead on a string. But if the wire is flimsy, you can imagine that we're not gonna be able to easily slide that bracket on the wire. So it'll make space closure a little bit less efficient. So you might be wondering, why aren't I getting the power chains if I just got my teeth taken out? And it's coming, okay? The third most common reason why you might need power chains in your treatment is that gaps may develop in your treatment. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I don't have gaps, I'm gonna get gaps? Not necessarily. The initial orthodontic wires are basically to work out any rotations that occur. Now, if you can imagine two teeth that are really close to one another, if we start lining them up, you might develop a little bit of gap between teeth here and there. Don't worry, your orthodontist is not gonna finish your case leaving gaps between your teeth. But these gaps may develop during these initial, what we call leveling and aligning, basically getting all the teeth pretty much work out the rotations and start lining them up. If these gaps are to develop though, you're gonna likely need power chains to close them up, right? You don't wanna leave gaps where there were no gaps to begin with. Well, you never wanna leave gaps anyway, but you get my point. So even if you don't have gaps in the beginning of treatment or have extractions, you might still need power chains. And this is true in cases that are actually crowded because if we have severe crowding, what we might have to do is we might have to open up space between teeth to bring teeth out, move teeth around, things like that. And as these spaces develop, when we're all done with treatment, we wanna bring everything back together so that you have no spacing and no crowding so that your teeth are all perfectly aligned. Which brings me to our fourth reason why we might need power chains and that's for rotations. And I actually made a separate video like entirely for this. And in that video, we talked about how power chains are used to actually rotate teeth. I'm not gonna dive into it here, but I am gonna link it out. So if it's something you're interested in watching, it's gonna be in the description of today's video. But like really, really briefly, what they can be used by is, you know, if you wanna lift up a table, if you grab it from one corner, it's really inefficient, right? But let's say you wanna rotate a table. Well, if you have two people standing on opposite sides of the table and lifting it up and moving it, it's a lot more efficient because you can rotate it around the middle of the table. I think I referred to it as a bed in that episode, but you know what I mean. It's more efficient to rotate it from opposite sides, right? So a power chain can be used on opposite sides of a tooth in opposite directions to basically spin a tooth and rotate it. By using power chains to derotate teeth, it can actually make your treatment quicker because it's being more efficient. It can make it so that more things are being done between appointments in order to derotate teeth. Now this isn't always necessary. There's cases where minor rotations, they can be worked out with just the wire alone, but sometimes you might need a power chain to actually rotate a tooth. So this is a perfect example that power chains aren't always used to close spaces. Sometimes they're used for rotations and sometimes they're used to hold spaces closed, which is the fifth reason why your orthodontist might use power chains. Power chains are great at closing space, but once the space is closed, a power chain can actually be used to keep space closed. So even if you have no gaps between your teeth, but you had gaps, or your orthodontist wants to keep space closed, your orthodontist might use a power chain to hold space closed. The most common way I can think about this being used is when you need to wear like what's called class two elastics. Now, class two elastics are where we wear rubber bands from the upper canines to your lower molars, and that's used to correct an overjet. And an overjet looks something like this, where your upper teeth are too far forward compared to your lower. And if you're gonna wear elastics, you'd be wearing them to bring those upper teeth back or lower teeth forward to look something more like this. Now, if you wear these elastics really, really well, you can imagine that there might be a gap that develops between your canine and your lateral incisor. So if you're wearing elastics well, you might notice a gap develop right in here. So that's a perfect indication when your orthodontist might use a power chain across the front six teeth to hold that unit together so that when you're wearing rubber bands, gaps don't develop. So like I said, power chains are great at closing space, but they're also amazing at holding space closed. So this brings us to the question that a lot of people are asking, do power chains hurt? Because the name sounds really scary. Like both of the words of power chain sound scary. Power and chain both sound like they're gonna cause a lot of discomfort. And I generally say it doesn't hurt any more than your regular orthodontic appointment. It's basically like a tightening. You're gonna be adding a force to your teeth your teeth don't know if this force is caused by a wire, if it's caused by a power chain or a rubber band. Your teeth only know the force that is applied to them. So if you've had braces and you're doing just fine, then don't worry, power chains aren't gonna be that much more uncomfortable. They're probably gonna feel just like any other tightening. And just like everything else in braces, when you first deliver a force to the tooth, that's when it has most of the inflammation. But as days go on, your body gets used to the force on the teeth and your body starts reacting to it. So the discomfort starts going lower and lower. So like I say with everything with braces, if you have discomfort, just give it a little bit of time. Be sure to eat cold foods, take whatever you take over the counter for your headaches and it will help a ton. But no, power chains aren't the most painful thing in the world. 
Don't worry, you're gonna do awesome with them and you're gonna do great things for your bracelet journey. So be patient throughout the process. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys in today's episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more content like this. And be sure to stay healthy, happy, and keep smiling. I will catch you guys next Saturday on another episode of Braces Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg, 